Man, how many games have we watched over the years? I don't know that I've ever seen that. We've wanted to do an Ask CCS for the past few days, but people kept getting thrown out of games. So finally, they behaved last night. Yeah, we have time to do an Ask CCS trio. This is going to include an on-deck interference issue, a hit-by-pitch versus dead ball strike versus fair ball foul ball situation, and finally, a fair foul on a little chopper at home plate. Hi, I'm Lindsay. Let's get into it. Up up Rodriguez Hayes. Brown. Oh. Here comes Derek Shelton arguing that the Hayes was impeded. We begin with the question of interference by an on deck batter. Namely, what constitutes interference versus incidental contact? I, don't know what, I honestly don't know what the rule is. Nor do I. Deck. I like what they're doing here. I like that the four guys are going to get together. I mean, Intentional or not, the rule is 601B. It's called fielder right of way and effectively requires all players or coaches of the team at bat, including the people who are on deck, to vacate the space needed by a fielder for any batted or thrown ball. If they fail to do it, it is interference. In this case, the batter is declared out for the interference of his teammate, the on deck batter, runner's return. So this situation is kind of funny because the batter's out because of the on-deck batter's interference, and the next batter, the on-deck batter, comes to the plate, despite having effectively caused the interference. The rule book lawyers look at it and say, wait a minute, there's a rule that says that only one fielder shall be declared entitled to the benefit of the protection for fielding a batted ball, to which I say, that's a different rule. That's about a runner who interferes. This is not a runner. This is an on-deck batter. The right-of-way rule, it doesn't matter who would receive that protection ordinarily. If there is any interference with any fielder, it is a violation. Here's the bunt, pops it up, Benson broke, then slams on the brakes. Solano off balance. In that same vein of technicality, we look at the dead ball strike. Most people know by now that if you are swinging at a pitch as it hits you, it's a dead ball and a strike. The question here is, well, what if they're bunting? It's not a swing. And the answer is, anytime the ball touches a batter as opposed to their bat first, it is a dead ball. And in this case, the batter was attempting to bunt at the ball. That is a strike as well. And for absolute certainty, refer to Rule 505 regarding the base award on a hit by pitch to find that if the batter is attempting not to strike but to hit the ball, they are not entitled to first. After review, the call on the field is overturned. We have a dead ball strike. Ball hit the batter. The batter will come back up the bat, and the runner is still at third base. Glaber Torres with a check swing, and he stayed in the box. A quick move by Kirk. It was a fair ball, and he got tagged out one away. Our final play, New York, asks where fair territory is. We notice that home plate itself is in fair territory. Even though the batted ball first strikes foul territory, we wait for the catcher to touch it in fair territory to establish fair foul. Catcher touches it over home plate. That's fair. Home plate's in fair territory. You can see that's why Kirk caught the ball and put it right down on top of home plate to show the umpire. The lines themselves, foul, are in fair territory. Funny. And they start at the point of plate. That's why something like this would be a fair ball. Thanks for the questions. Like and subscribe. These questions came from our Discord server. You can visit us online at closecallsports.com. We'll see you on the site. Bonus question, why didn't the umpires see it, the two in real time? They're looking at the ball because they want to see if that ball hits the netting. That would make it a dead ball. That is hard to see on replay and that is a higher priority. Remember, you're keeping your eye on the ball while it is in play. Cute coaching tidbit, the keep your eye on the ball Little League thing comes from the rule book's general instruction to umpires. Fantastic. But that's why Wolf and Barber at third base didn't see it because they were too busy looking up. Fortunately, Alan Porter, for instance, an off umpire who did not have responsibility on this play, had their backs by looking low to see the contact. Oh, that's oh, obstruction. Hey, oh, that's interference. 